Hey everyone, hope you guys are enjoying Monster Hunter in whichever fashion you're choosing to play it as. And today I have some really exciting news specifically for those Monster Hunter World fans or Monster Hunter World Iceborne fans. And that is essentially the confirmation directly from Capcom that the game is coming to a brand new platform. Sort of. And that is because essentially the game, not only did it receive a brand new patch, which we're going to be going over in just a second, but it simply just got verified for the Steam Deck. Of course, the Steam Deck being the so-called Switch Killer, if you will, or the PC handheld of choice for a lot of players due to the pricing structure of this device, but also because it just basically plays really well with Steam and a lot of PC players enjoy using Steam. So therefore, it has become a little bit of a go-to type of experience uh, for handheld gaming of your PC games. And officially and originally, Monster Hunter did not have a lot of support for the Steam Deck. I know Monster Hunter Rise um, did end up getting verified for the Steam Deck around launch. I believe uh, Sunbreak was no different as well. So those two versions of that game have been getting the support that it needed. But interestingly enough, World and Iceborne did not. But that doesn't mean that the game wasn't playable on a Steam Deck, let's say, just a week ago or so, or even two weeks ago, or even just yesterday. Um, the argument here was that a lot of players simply just had to use uh, creative control options, if you want to put it that way, kind of customize their controls on the Steam Deck, which you can do, absolutely. Uh, but there were some on-screen keyboarding situations going on there. There were some elements that simply didn't necessarily work properly, um, uh, some UI options that simply weren't uh, quite there and then performance wasn't necessarily up to par but now that Capcom has gone back in reworked it and then basically toggled some things around work some things around in the game files they have officially gotten it to work on the Steam Deck 100% and some players have confirmed that there is a little bit of a better performance profile there as well now to be fair uh, the Steam Deck of course can be configured in any way you want of course, by sacrificing some battery, you can get better performance or you can use lower power, you know, essentially running on lower power mode uh, with low resolution and have a little bit of more battery. But at the end of the day, ultimately, you make that decision. But it seems to be like it's more efficient now than it was originally before. This is all thanks to the version 15.2 update which also brings not only again monster hunter world and iceborne steam deck verification but it also brings in latin american spanish support to all versions of that game so this is also going to be uh something of an update that it will presumably make its way to playstation and xbox as well which is very good to see i do it does make me wonder i've never checked myself but i do have to wonder what kind of version of spanish did it originally have uh, available within the game's files originally but it's very very good to see them do that however usually and specifically when it comes to pc this is something that pc players will be very extremely well aware of by this point in time usually when there's a brand new patch of a pc game specifically on steam you're gonna end up losing mod support for a little bit of time and monster hunter world and iceborne have received a ton of mod support whether it is brand new changes to the game, whether it is new options, whether it is uh, UI changes, whether it is customization for characters, whether it is even new monsters being added in altogether. I see you guys out there with those uh, interesting new monsters being added in there to um, uh, Iceborne and stuff. I've seen those videos. They look awesome. But I personally, again, I've never been a great world Iceborne fan. And the, on the PC, I never really played it. So I played it on the PlayStation 5 when I did. And, you know that mod support isn't available on playstation 5 so i never really got to see those uh, awesome additions to that game however uh, it is worth noting and a lot of people certainly did i saw fomento tweeting about this as well is that essentially as of the version 15.20 update any and all mod support is essentially killed off instantly that doesn't mean mods won't be working by the time that you're watching this video or essentially you know the original creators of each individual mod has to go ahead and rework um, the code again to be able to get it to work it's just going to take some time and that's usually the case with each and every single one of these updates however a lot of players have their steam accounts automatically set up for auto updates so usually what ends up happening is that players 
instantly just boot up the game and the game just or they put up steam however and the game automatically updates on its own because they i believe is set to default by automatic options you can choose to manually update whenever you want but chances are you have it set up to default to auto update and what that basically does is that updates the game and you instantly lose access to your old mod however there is a work way um, for you to be able to play the old version of the game until the mods are back and working again you can certainly do that through steam you can basically revert to the original option to the older version of the game that work with all the mods you should be able to do that uh, with ease through the game's files themselves and steam should be enabled that however you do lose lose full-on access to the online experience because you're essentially playing an older version of the build of the game so of course in typical fashion like all oh, monster hunter games and this is something you're going to be able to see in rise and sunbreak as well any sort of newer version instantly allows you to internet to have access to the internet uh, and play multiplayer with other players but if you are playing an older build and one that doesn't necessarily have the latest patch notes or whatever the latest changes um, you are going to be locked out of online multiplayer so you know you can revert you can go back however you're not going to be able to have online experience so if you're a solo hunter it's not going to affect you at all until the mods get fixed up and then you should be up and running within a week or so presumably if those original developers of those mods uh, want to go ahead and you know rework those again chances are they will especially if it's a relatively popular mod certainly uh, some of those mods for like new monsters being added into the game and the entire whole setup Oh, of course, those guys, I would expect them to kind of like um, go ahead and go back. There's a lot of wasted time if they choose not to do that, since players wouldn't be able to enjoy all the fruits of their labor. And certainly they're going to go do that. But um, it's interesting that almost after two to three years, World and Iceborne ended up getting an update almost out of nowhere. And it all stemmed from not only the addition of Steam Deck Verification, which again seems to add a little bit of better performance based on what some of the people have uh, have been seeing uh, talking about, but more importantly, it adjusts some of those options that simply weren't there. Toggle bulls are now actually going to be working properly. Uh, whatever keyboard uh, options you simply had on on-screen options as before have been completely reworked and rechanged. So you are basically able to enjoy the game exactly as you should. And more importantly, those players who are just going to choose to play with the thumbsticks and the buttons, like if it would be a traditional controllers, can do so as well. You don't have to worry about having to, you know, drag things around with those uh, little touch pads or whatever the case is. Uh, now, it's going to be interesting to see just uh, if, if this is just going to be for the Steam Deck or if they're going to end up, you know, doing some changes maybe for the Raw Ally or any of these other handheld PC options. Uh, Capcom hasn't really done much with those as of yet. Yes, the games are playable but they are usually just dependent upon what the game can do and run as in a native option. But that's about all the information that I have for you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoy your new um, Monster Hunter World Iceborne experience on the Steam Deck. If you're brand new to my channel, though, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hit the bell to receive notifications when the videos go up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See ya.